This week on Desi Beat. Not enough time on your hands, or not in the mood to cook after a long day toiling at work? Well, spice up your life with a tawa by your side. Unexpected guests at home, or you're afraid you just want to go breezy on the prep. All you need to do is bring out the tawa and watch it sizzle. Today on Desi Beat, we board the metal saucer or the plate, or better known as the tawa, and take you on a tour of tawa recipes from our dish. Food has a knack of bringing people together, and this paradigm has been especially a way of life for us Desis. Desi Kana means forging bonds and creating conversations. It's a centerpiece of holiday festivities. It's also how we welcome newcomers into our thriving Desi community, thousands of miles away from home. Mealtime is the instance where we share traditions, which range from traditional recipes to age-old customs. Indeed, the Rasoi is hailed as one of the most important spaces of a Desi life. People often stop me and say, hey, do you eat with your fingers? And I always say, yes, of course I do. And I'm very proud of it. Why? Because I'm a Desi. And that's how you get the full flavor of your meal, especially when you're a Desi. And on that note, welcome along to Desi Beat. I'm Raj Guy, I'm your host. And on today's episode, we're talking about a very special way of cooking. We're talking about Davas, yes, welcome along to the Desi Beat Dava special. External and cultural influences have really shaped the way that we Desis cook today. The shape, the utensils that we use, and there are so many different methods of cooking, and we Desis are in a really unique and very, very enviable position in the cultural world right now. Now, I like the old school style of cooking. I like using those raw materials and those raw dishes and the, the way that we used to cook traditionally back in the Brind. So today, of course, we're talking about the tawa, which happens to be one of my favorite ways of cooking. So let's not waste any time. Let's head off to the kitchen. Tawa cuisine and the variety of hundreds of tawa recipes derive their name from the commonly used pan in Desi households, which is referred to by many as a tawa or a tawa or a tawa. Whether it's made of sheet metal, aluminium or steel, the tawa is an extremely versatile utensil. But there's something very special about it. When you use it to create your dishes, it adds a special kind of a zing to our desi spices and sauces. So what is this magic? Where does it come from? To get those answers, we head off into the kitchen. The pan is round and varies in diameter. Usually at home, you'll find it between eight and 12 inches. While in bigger kitchens, restaurants and chefs who cook for food in large quantities, they can be as big as a meter wide. I'm at home. Well, I feel like I'm at home. I'm at home in the kitchen. Kitchen is where I belong, as you know. I love the smells, the aromas. I love the sounds of the kitchen. I love the people in kitchens. This is exactly where I should be. And what I like most about kitchens is the fact that I meet professionals, people like Chef Raj here. Chef Raj is here today, why? Because he's going to show us how to make the perfect king prawn tawa dish. Right, before we do that though, let me explain one thing. There are two important processes here. First of all, we are gonna make the masala. Now this is called a kara masala, or you can call it, you, you like to call it a chopped masala. Right, chopped masala. So that's what it looks like, the finished product, and that is what we're going to use as part of the, uh, the preparation for our tawa dish. But we're gonna show you exactly how we prepare that masala. So we've got lots and lots of ingredients right here in front of us, all laid out very professionally, very beautiful it looks as well. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, what's the first, well, first thing you need to do? I'm guessing you need a bit of oil. First of all, you need to turn the pan on. Yeah. <laughs> Right, some whole jeera. Some bay leaves. Some bay leaves. And some pieces of long. Some long, some cloves. For those of you that don't know what long is. And this is called cinnamon stick. You can put a couple of cinnamon stick as well. Or dalgini. Diced onions, chopped onions. See, this is what I'm saying. It's the sound of the kitchen. I love this banging and clanging and the sizzling and the flames. Yeah, you can't do this at home, can you? You want to have flames in your kitchen. That's why I like it here, right here. Salt. A little bit of salt goes in there. And now you need to add some tomatoes. There you go. Some tomatoes there we go. as well. <laughs> Look. Add some water. Okay. That, of course, is going to help you yeah. uh, And now you can put burning. all your masalas. So all the masalas are now going yeah. in. So all right. we got turmeric powder. It's healthy. Healthy. Red chili powder. Usually we use that green chili. 
because it's good for health and good good for health as well. Yeah. And some coriander powder. And we got this one is homemade masala. All right. So now tell me about this homemade masala because <laughs> nobody ever tells me. All right. <laughs> what goes into this? I know it's, it's a secret. It's of course, secret. it's a secret. Give me a rough idea. Like we put the crushed chilies, red chili, and oh, whole notice. whole dhania and jira. And I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> everything. <laughs> I thought I was getting it. I thought I was going to get the whole secret. <laughs> but no, it stops. Put some more tomatoes. Okay, but our tawa, our tawa dish is always spicy. Yeah. They're always hot, yeah? yeah? So there's no point. You can't go in and say, give me a really, really mild tawa no, dish. No, no, no. You, you can do it like uh, medium is spicy, but you can't say, I want proper mild. Ah, okay. You right. can't do it proper mild. So I think this is done. All right, so the masala there is... Uh, Pretty much done. Yeah. So, so that is exactly the same yeah. as what is in this. Yeah. Right? Because Obviously there's a lot more. Yeah. Okay, so our kala masala is ready. The tawa is on the heat. And it's time to cook our king prawn tawa style. A bit of oil. So it's called garlic tawa king prawn. All right, okay. So, so we need to lots of garlic. Lots of garlic. But prawns and garlic together, it's like a perfect marriage, right? Yeah. Because lots of flavor. And some turmeric powder. Okay, so we've got some turmeric in here as well. That gives it a good color, right? It yeah. looks lovely. It's and more appetizing now, now it's than just garlic. It's time to put that prawn. And we put, we cut it into butterfly. Okay, so you butterfly the prawns. Butterflying just means that you slice them and so they open up, but they still remain one piece, okay? And that means that you cook right through. It cooks faster and you get the flavor penetrating the whole of the prawn as well. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Now it's time to add some green chili. All right, here we go. This is real man stuff now. Real man stuff. <laughs> and we add some papers as well. So we've got some chopped yeah, chop red paper. and uh, green capsicum. Yeah. It's a lot harder to have all the, all the showmanship when you've got yeah. a dawa because you can't toss it the same way you can with a, with a wok or a karai. But there are a whole heap of different benefits now, when you're, when you're now cooking on a tawa. Some salt. A little bit of salt, you need a bit of seasoning, of course. And now time to put our kara masala. All right, so here's the masala we made earlier. <laughs> I love the way he's doing this. If that was me right now, half of those, <laughs> half of those prawns would be down there somewhere. <laughs> So generally, how long do prawns take to cook? Two minutes, three minutes, yeah, two, four three minutes? Yeah, three minutes. And you don't want to overcook them, right? They've got to stay moist, and otherwise they lose all their flavor, they become very rubbery, and, uh, and they let out all of their water and all the moisture as well, so you don't want that. Now we need to add a little bit of coriander powder. The coriander powder, the mia powder. And now the aroma. Right we got now. some ginger. Oh yes, our favorite is julienne de ginger. Julienne. French. Parlez-vous Punjabi? You see, I speak French. I speak French. <laughs> All right, fresh coriander always works. So it's nearly done. So we are nearly done. All right, time to plate up. There we have it. And there you have it. Ginger on the top. So look at that. Beautiful, succulent, juicy king prawns made in the tava with lots of garlic, garnished beautifully by Chef Raj. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank well you. done, that man. It's impossible to find a desi marriage reception minus a tava recipe. Tawa sabzi, tawa fried veggies, or tawa mefil, as some like to describe it, is a hot favorite amongst guests. So all this talk about tawa flavors and tawa cooking and all this has got me really excited because I want to know exactly what kind of flavors to expect. Um, and the only way to find that out really is to try them. So here is the dish that Chef Raj made for us, king prawns all cooked on a tawa with their special masala. Now, I've got myself a naan right here to taste it with, but as per usual, I'm going to start by just tasting the, uh, the prawn on its own with a little bit of that masala. Now, it's a teeny bit 
tougher than I expected, but it's, it's a very uh, difficult thing to cook it to absolute perfection, so it's super soft and it's not overcooked and it's not undercooked. It's gonna be just, just right. Hmm, but it tastes good. Lots of flavor there. The Tava dishes are hot. They're meant to be served um, with that chili kick in there, that fieriness, right? And that certainly has got it because you've got the red chilies in there. And you've also got the green sliced chilies that um, they also added to the second part of the preparation. So essentially there are three different stages when you're cooking a, a tava dish. The first of all is the preparation of the masala. So you can get all your spices together and the whole spices as well and you cook those down and you form your masala. Secondly, you can marinate your meats. If you're using meats, you marinate meat or your chicken or even your prawns and you half cook them or, or semi cook them, maybe three quarter cooked. And then finally, they all come together, the masala and the meats or the prawns and they all get put onto this huge tava or a smaller depending on the amount that you're cooking and the amount of people you're feeding and then all the flavors come together and then they're tossed together and finally they're presented on a tava just like this. Coming up on today's Desi Mantra we present to you an exotic fruit from our desh. It's considered to be the king of all fruits. Tava paneer straight out of the tandoor amalgamated with all these different flavors garnished beautifully with this mulli here as well and it looks great. On today's Desi Mantra, we present to you an exotic fruit from our desh. It's considered to be the king of all fruits. And in fact, it's said to be the largest tree-born fruit in the world. It can weigh anything from 5 kg to around 10 kg each. In fact, they grow up to 25 kg. It's delicious. Can you name the fruit? Fanas, chakka or kattal or popular in the West by the name of jackfruit. The giant of a desi fruit traces its origins to the western guts of India. And according to archaeological findings, jackfruit, Hamare Desh mein 4,000 to 6,000 years se cultivated kiya ja raha hai. So, why the name jackfruit then? Well, you gotta ask the Portuguese, who took a sincere liking for its musty fragrance. Jackfruit's flesh is very high in fiber content. The succulent sweet taste makes it a great ingredient for jams, candies, cakes and other sweet preparations. And when it's raw, it's eaten as a vegetable. In fact, the texture of raw jackfruit is so similar to that of meat that vegetarians often savour it in curries and hence it's often called a vegetarian ka meat. Filled with diverse sets of nutrients, jaseki, vitamin C and A, thiamine, niacin, calcium, potassium, folic acid, while it's also rich in vitamin B6. Jackfruit is full of photonutrients and it also lends anti-cancer, anti-hypertensive, anti-ulcer and anti-inflammatory properties to our bodies. While the fruit itself is rich and yummy, the jackfruit seeds have enormous medicinal properties due to which it continues to be used in traditional medicines. The seeds are sun-dried and either consumed in powdered form for its rich protein content or they're also boiled and eaten as a tasty snack. Fleshy, fruity, delicious and most importantly very healthy. I guess this is one of those fruits that really could be called the jack of all. You need to try it. And anyway, on that note, it's time we head back off into the next kitchen to find out more about our tava dishes. The tava can churn out as many varieties of succulent meats as it does with veggies. Whether it's a fish to shallow fry, a chicken to be quickly coated in cream or some mutton to be roasted. The center of the tava is again the sweet spot. So of course we're back in the kitchen and it's a Dava special program, Dava special episode but we're going to make a vegetable Dava dish. Now not just any old vegetable, the producer actually asked me to say it's the chicken of all vegetables but I don't think that's quite right, especially if you're a vegetarian, right? So I'm going to call it the king of all vegetables. Chef Baldev is here with me and he has got here uh, some uh, paneer which is on a, on, a, on a skewer, on a seek and that's going to go in the tandoor. It's been marinated uh, for a little while, a few hours probably, in some yogurt and some basic spices and we're going to make paneer tava, tava paneer, however you like to say it, but we're using tandoori paneer to do it with. So chef, if you would like to put that in the tandoor and uh, let's get cooking. So 
So it's out of the tandoor and onto the chopping board. And as you can see, Chef Baldev has cut that paneer into bite-sized pieces and we're ready to get that straight on to the tava. Okay, let's cook some tawa dishes. Right, uh, let me say before we start that we've got this uh, karam masala here. This has been made uh, previously, of course, it takes a little bit of time to get it right. Uh, what's in here? Basic spices. Uh, you've got some onions, you've got some tomatoes, you've got some uh, other glasses, ginger, garlic, and you've got whole spices in there. You've got bay leaves, you've got cloves, you've got some uh, cinnamon, and you've got whole jeera or, uh, and cumin, of course. Right, so that is going to go into our uh, tawa dish that we're making, of course, the uh, tandoori um, paneer tawa. Right, so what goes in first? Oil. Okay. Okay. A little salt. Right, so we don't want to yes. over fry them because we want to retain a little bit of that crunch as well. Yeah, yeah because don't forget we've got the soft uh, onions in the masala, and which is already there. Some bell peppers. Some bell Mixed peppers on. or capsicums. Yeah. Right. That gives a, a lot of colour as well, as well, of course, yeah. as the flavour. And crunchy, again, crunchy yeah, and a little bit of bite. Need some bite. Crunch. We don't want to overcook, you know. Yeah, so. we don't want to overcook it. Absolutely right. Fresh green chilli. Or oh, some more green chilli. Some more of that special masala. It gives it a little bit of flavour and it gives it a great aroma as well, I've got to tell you. But now it does smell really good. Now we will put really our, ready, our already made chopped masala. Okay, so chopped masala there. Make it hot a little bit. It's difficult to keep all of that on the tawa, because of course, yeah. once again, it's a small tawa and we normally use a big one, but because they're small portions, just to reiterate what I said earlier, is that uh, we're just doing it on a on a normal size tawa yeah. today. Now we will put our paneer. Okay, so back over here for the paneer. Okay, see I'm getting in everyone's yeah. way. If you don't have tandoor at home, you can put paneer on grill. Oh yes, of course. So, good, good point. Yeah. Not many people, yeah. unless you like me, have a tandoor at home. Yeah. So you can put it onto a griddle pan and keep keep turning it, or you can put it into a grill. You could possibly even cook it in the oven as well. Number of ways of doing it. Now, important thing to note here is, of course, that kara masala is already cooked. The paneer has already been in the tandoor, so it's already cooked pretty much 95% cooked. So all you're really doing here on the tawa is you're mixing those flavors, you're amalgamating everything, you're giving them a little bit of a party so they all get to know each other and they become best friends because that way the whole dish will taste absolutely amazing. It's already done now. That's yeah, already done. There you go. Ready. Ready. ready to serve. All right, ready to serve. Straight onto that fantastic looking uh, plate. There you have it, Chef Baldev's tawa paneer, straight out of the tandoor, amalgamated with all these different flavors, garnished beautifully with this mulli here as well, and it looks great. We spoke previously about the tawa being flat, but tawa is exclusively used for a quick fry, a slightly convex at the center. More isliyeke, generous amounts of butter, ghee and oil find its way on the tawa, depending on the types of meat recipes you want to cook on it. And so, in this case, the flat version of the tawa might become a bit cumbersome to handle. So you saw Chef Baldev cooking up a very special paneer dish for me. Not only is it a paneer cooked on the tawa, but the paneer is cooked in the tandoor first, marinated and cooked. Uh, it looks good. I uh, love the garnish. I love the way it's presented. And I love the fact that it's got some muli here as well. Muli is a big, uh, big favour of mine. So, mm, mm, mm. Excuse me while I'm nibble on that. Mm, it's great. Um, so these are bite-sized pieces of paneer. As I said, they're marinated with some simple spices. Um, and again, as per usual, I'm just break into that. It's quite soft. Uh, I'm not the biggest paneer fan in the world, as you know, but I'm always willing to give anything a try. So you can still taste the paneer, which is a good thing, I guess, because you could very easily over-spice that, over-flavor it with other flavors all around it, because of course they 
it kind of sticks and covers the paneer um, and you lose the flavor of the paneer. You still get the texture, you still get the consistency of the paneer, but not necessarily the flavor. Uh, but in this case, you certainly can taste the paneer, which is great, okay? Mm. So technically, there's a slight difference when you're cooking with a tawa, because when I'm cooking at home, perhaps, I might put in my vegetables or my, my meats and things and add my masalas to it as I go along. So everything is kind of incorporating, but with tawa cooking, generally, you'll find them making a paste, adding some water and adding the masala to the water, and then they make a thin paste, and then to that, they would add their vegetables and toss them until they're cooked and just cooked, just right. As I say, don't want to overcook them, but uh, the end result can be quite... Uh, uh, quite amazing really. Ham mein se kuch log hain for whom a good meal almost always means a meaty affair. Yes, it's easy to be bowled over by the whole variety of non-vegetarian delights in desi cuisine. But the versatility of the tawa manages to bring out equally delightful crispy and creamy preparations both veg and non-veg. That too, in a very short time. Ah, the wonders of the tawa. Those tastes are still lingering in my mouth and will continue to do so for some time yet. I'll tell you what, I could do an extended episode of this program so I could carry on eating those wonderful, super delicious dishes. But alas, all good things come to an end. And so is the case of today's episode of Desi Beat. Why don't you go off to your kitchen and try some of those things that you saw today? Just get yourself a tawa and cook something up really special. Make it yourself, invent something new, something exciting. And on that note, I'm off to find some really exciting things to bring you for future episodes of Desi Beat. Until the next time, take care. Chaat Palau and Pav Bhaji with the jazz. That one adds to the Desi swag. Crispier and tastier than the usual taste. The half fry variety gives a lip smacking in a haste. With gorse to roast and the fish to fry. Healthy, juicier. Tawa is a must try. Aujo, bye bye, phir milenge, namaskar, adab. Basically, the tawa cooking, uh, like we, in Bombay, we make pav bhaji. Uh, that's uh, predominantly a tawa dish uh, where it's a mixture of all the vegetables and it's quite fam famous in Bombay and all over the world as well. Uh, similarly, uh, tawa is used a lot in Pakistani cuisine uh, where they do the livers and kidneys and things like that on the tawa. It's a combination of uh, khada masala, so it's, it's got less of dry spice and more of fresh herbs.